Well, Maria Caulfield is Conservative MP for Lewis. She was a health minister under Boris Johnson. and She was also put forward to us by the government when we asked to speak to somebody today. Good afternoon and thank you for coming on the programme. Good afternoon. Um, quite a lot that it would be good to talk through, not least because we are getting some lines from uh, the Prime Minister's spokesman about various issues. And just on this question of migration... Um, we've we've been told Prime Minister wants to see net migration fall as set out in the 2019 manifesto. So does he agree with what we know Suella Braverman, his Home Secretary, has said, that immigration should be done in the tens of thousands? Well, I think, you know, uh, Rishi's been very clear, as he was at Prime Minister's Questions today, that he stands by the 2019 uh, manifesto, and that did uh, address the immigration issue. And we have set up a points-based system, so people with the skills that we need or the um, occupations where there's shortages of labour, there will be uh, flexibility to allow uh, people to come through. And I, myself, in Westminster Hall yesterday, uh, in a uh, farming uh, debate uh, did uh, call for agricultural workers uh, to, to, to be given more flexibility and, and the system we have means we can be nimble now so those areas whether it's social care hospitality or agriculture we can adjust our system pretty quickly uh, to allow in the skills and, and the labour that we need. Okay but that's that's strange because there are huge source shortages take hospitality take care take the NHS if you if the system flexibly adapts to those there is no way you are getting down to the tens of thousands. It's currently 239,000 and it'll only be going up. Well, I mean, these are kind of global shortages of stuff. If you go to parts of Europe um, uh, and the rest of the world, you know, it, it across the world there's shortages of health and, and social care staff so just by uh, allowing people in doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to fill those va vacancies and we've got a longer term plan uh, to train people up uh, domestically uh, for those services but allowing people who want to come and work here in those areas where we're short of uh, staff uh, is part of the problem it can't be the only solution um, uh, it has to be no, about but it's uh, just quite hard to reconcile the two statements well I think if you look at um, immigration overall so we have got a system in place now now uh, that allows for uh, legal migration for those areas where we have got shortages of skills that doesn't address uh, the the issue of illegal migration and I think I'm a South Coast MP the small boats issue is huge uh, for my constituency and I think that's the area where Suella actually wants to make some progress and we've made very little progress in that uh, and that's really going to be her focus it can't be right if we have a robust legal immigration system that is undermined constantly by people uh, diverting the system and those who can afford to pay people, traffickers and smugglers, can get into the country. Uh, and Rishi has been very okay, clear about so that. Get, get tough on the cross-channel boats but be much more relaxed about those coming well, here to work. I'm not saying work. more relaxed, but it has to be more nimble and responsive to the labour market. OK, well, what about the two-year visa idea proposed by Julian Metcalf? Well, I think that, you know, that's something that I'm su sure Suella will look at. Um, and, you know, she wasn't in post very long under uh, Liz Truss, and so we do need to give her time uh, to get that uh, looked at. But, I'm, you know, our, mm. our system of legal migration does allow for that flexibility, and it will change over time. You know, what's uh, a shortage... Uh, of occupation now may be very different in a year, two years' time because we are, for example, nursing, we are seeing more nurses coming through uh, uh, being trained at the moment. So in five years' time, we may have a very different need to the need we have today. Um, on another matter, one of the other comments made by the Prime Minister's spokesman is that he refused to commit to the triple lock on pensions. Now, it was only last week that Liz Truss at Prime Minister's Questions, said she would. Uh, now, uh, can you... Uh, sh s what, I mean, I know you've made comments in the past that you wouldn't accept anything other than the triple lock on pensions, that it rises in line with inflation. Can you see this government doing any different than that? So I think Jeremy Hunt, who's uh, remained as Chancellor, was ha, has committed to that. Um, obviously, there's going to, to be a review before um, the, the new fiscal statement um, on the 17th of November. But it is in our manifesto as well. And, and Rishi has been clear that he's sticking with the, the manifesto pledges. Um, and, you know, I, I spoke out on it because, uh, you know, I have a lot of pensioners. But there's a kind of a perception that pensioners are, are a wealthy group of people and very often they're not. Um, so but, just to be clear, if there was for any any reason that the 
triple lock on pensions, rising in line with inflation, was adjusted or changed in any way, you could not support that. Well, you know, I have been uh, very clear um, about where I stand on this and, and spoke out uh, when Liz Truss, you know, and actually Liz Truss wasn't proposing to remove it. There, I think there was a bit of a vacuum of information and, and, and Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor has said um, he, w- he will make uh, clear um, when he does his uh, fiscal statement, which is now upgraded, I think, to an, uh, a full statement, um, where he sits. But um, it is in our manifesto and so I would expect to see it uh, respected. I sp- it would also be quite something, given how much it's changed, the government position on that, if it changed again. Well, I don't think the government position... It's changed again now I don't think the government from- position has changed. I think, they, you know, when, uh, they, they don't, uh, when there's not uh, an it announcement, was- people fill that uh, vacuum with speculation, it's- and I think we just need to... It's not speculation. The government refused to commit to it until last Wednesday. Well, you know, they, but actually, they came out and said that the triple lock last Wednesday was not yeah. was not going to be uh, uh, scrapped. Um, and, and I think we do need to give so the why chancellor. Can't they say it today? Well, I think we need to give the chancellor and the team time uh, to. You know, they've for a very good reason they've delayed. It just raises uh, uncertainty again. It does it? raise uncertainty, but they have said that they want to. You know, we you heard in your earlier report that flip flopping over financial decisions uh, spooks the market, and I think it's really important that when they make their uh, statement uh, in November. November, that that is the certainty that we get. We've already seen that having Rishi Sunak as Prime Minister has seen uh, the pound uh, stabilise, I think it's at a six-week high. Uh, what we don't want is constant speculation of what might or might not be uh, announced in November. Uh, we had confirmation last week from the Chancellor. The Chancellor is still in post, so I'd expect that uh, confirmation to remain. But, you know, so often the speculation is, is wrong on these things, but all it does uh, is create worry and fear. Let's wait until next November. Let's wait for the Chancellor to make his statement yeah, and then we will have certainty. Be fair, there's only speculation because the government would suddenly seem to not be afraid of stating its supposed well, no official point position. There's setting a date for a fiscal statement and then uh, kind of announcing most of it uh, beforehand. There's a re- good reason why uh, the Chancellor needs to sit, sit okay, down with so, all Secretaries of right, State so, and go through their budgets. So the government at the moment is still not confirming that. that there is... So, on, but what they have said, from the sounds of it, is the f- ban on fracking is now back. So, because uh, Rishi Sunak said, I stand by the manifesto on that when he was asked about fracking. So, do we presume then that that moratorium, because the manifesto said the moratorium would continue unless there's a definitive change it, to the scientific evidence. So, presumably, fracking is now off. Well, you know, that's what I took from uh, Prime Minister's questions uh, today. You know, th- it was this government that brought in uh, the moratorium on fracking and, you know, while there, there's some people making a case for it, it's not going to solve our energy uh, problems uh, this winter and that has to be our absolute priority. And we are making huge progress, you know, with uh, renewables uh, and that's why we're in a very different place uh, to many other countries across Europe who have been so reliant on Russian oil and gas. Uh, we've developed, you know, in my constituency, I've got the Rampion Wind Farm, which is uh, powering over 350 thousand homes we've got a good track record um, and we need to to make sure that that's um, that we're delivering on a range of energy measures uh, to, uh, to, to develop and uh, make sure we've got that energy security um, so that we're yeah. not in a position where we're dependent on overseas gas and oil in the long term Maria Maria Caulfield thank you very much